This is a podcast about both having autism and living with someone who has autism. My mom is Sonia, and I'm Josh, and this is Josh Has Autism. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Glad you stopped by today. Um, today, Josh and I are going to be talking about, um, so what I, uh, the, well, associated with the blog, because the blog is called Autism Meets Menopause. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Um, and w- that brings up a whole set of um, dynamics. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, that's one way to describe it, right? Absolutely one way to describe it. Right, right. So, um, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but right now, um, for any uh, women out there um, experiencing some menopause, uh, maca root, the red maca root is fantastic. It's why Josh and I can sit in the same room and have conversations right now. Um, So, anyway, just to let you know. Anyway, it's uh, yeah. The blog is autism meets menopause, and it makes me think about the communication that we have with one another and the interpretation uh, that you take on uh, when we have conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, and the one thing that I noticed is that it's interesting because autism. You know, we've been kind of told by. We've been told by doctors that it's your you you have a difficult time reading nonverbal cues, mm-hmm. and sometimes even the language that's used is hard to it's hard for you to interpret. Yeah, that's you agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yet, it's interesting because when let's say if I'm if I'm upset about something, and my volume level goes higher than you're comfortable with, um, I, there's a definite reaction that you have to that. Yeah. So, it, the words, and like I said, sometimes the words that are used. So, what is it that... Can you, can you help that me to understand that and anybody else to understand that? Yeah. Um, whenever... Whenever it happens that you're upset with something, you your uh, I don't remember how you just said it, but the decibels go up. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to say I'm too loud. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes, you get much louder, mm-hmm. and even if you're not directing it at me or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's still, if you're upset about something and you're talking to me in that elevated mm-hmm. state, mm-hmm. Uh, it feels like you're yelling at me. Okay. Even if you're not, uh, even if you're upset at something else and you're talking loudly to me, it feels like you're yelling at me. Okay. And it stresses me out right and it makes it very difficult for me to in general function okay so is it the volume that you're hearing that bothers you or is it the emotion that's coming with the volume a bit of both um with it being so loud, it's like I sometimes sometimes I'm afraid to tell you <laughs> that uh, you that you need to lower your voice. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I can see that because I don't want to upset the the mini rage monster that you are. <laughs> that that is menopause. <laughs> yes, I get it. I get it again. Again, maca root people. <laughs> maca root. Um, Yeah, so what's interesting about that to me is that one of the things that you've had to work so hard at is to understand emotion that comes from other people. Your own emotions as well. Yeah. 
to f- had you know figure that it took a while to figure that out for you, just like the rest of us. It took a while for us to figure ourselves well, out. It took me a bit a bit longer, but yeah. And so, when reading nonverbal communication from others, mm-hmm. um, how is it that you're able to um, digest? If if I'm in um, if I'm in a mood, if I'm not pleasant to be around, you know, if I'm being out of line and obnoxious, how do you uh, handle that for yourself? What do you do? Um, I. Well, for one thing, if you're on if you're on a rampage like that, mm-hmm. there's no stopping you. <laughs> yeah. So it even if I try and say something in a nice way, uh, like please don't speak as loud beca- as loud as you are, mm-hmm. because because it's stressing me out and it's making it difficult for me to concentrate on what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Even if I say something like that you would still be upset at me. Right. I you're right. And and sometimes you're, it would set you off even worse. You're you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Those those things I I think that I really feel like we've moved beyond those experiences cuz we haven't had those in a while, but I've noticed that even if I'm just talking if I'm excited about something or my 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 volume is higher Mm-hmm. I've noticed that that stresses you out, even though it's not a subject that I'm upset about. Right, and sometimes I mistake it as so. Okay. Uh, not necessarily because it's uh, the tone of voice or anything. It's more so you have an elevated, like like you said, an elevated volume, mm-hmm. and sometimes I mistake that for a different emotion. Okay. So so there are times so just to clarify I'm completely acknowledging that at times I'm a jerk and menopause is has been to the the past I don't know couple of years been something that's really been difficult for me to manage seems like right now it's kind of even keel you know for a while now it's been an even keel how long have you been on that route about that long (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah about that long um yeah yeah thank you karen by the way um she's the one that told me about it (laughs) um yeah and i and that plus exercise plus plus trying to get enough sleep but what I'm saying is that, that like we kind of it, it kind of came together at this time where you are dealing you know just because I'm going through menopause doesn't mean that you stop having a difficult time reading emotions right and so during the times that I've been a jerk you know first of all I'm sorry for that and it, if you, if when I think about that now, because it seems like we've really gone over the roughest part of that. When you, when you would in, interpret me being upset with you, um, were you able to process that? Were you able to know what to do with that, or did it? Does that? cause you to shut down. So what I'm asking you is that if I'm having a strong emotion about something, does my strong emotion reach you or is it just that I'm loud that's reaching you? Sometimes it's a mixture of both. Uh, it Sometimes it's very easy to tell if you're exci- like happily excited about something. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if you're excited about something, but there's, but it's, 
doesn't really have that tone of happiness to it, but you're really focused on it. You're excited about it. Mm -hmm. You're very forceful about it. Mm -hmm. And that can lead to the elevated volume and not necessarily me noticing that there's a happy note in it. Mm -hmm. So does that happen with everybody that you come in contact with that because so tell me if I'm wrong about this, because what it sounds like is that I mean, communication in general is there's verbal and there's nonverbal communication all the time. Mm -hmm. And everybody's having to read everybody else all, all the time anyway, through every conversation. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that you're that's deliberate that you do now because of the things that you've been taught, that you look for the emotion behind something? Or is that something that just through the years with your those of us that are closest to you, you're beginning to read each one of us. Again, a little bit of both. Um, I mean, with you guys, I've, I know you guys fairly well. I mean, I've lived with you my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, I would, I, I would like to think that I do know you guys pretty well. And I still have difficulty sometimes it, uh, knowing whenever you, are not Rage Face McGee or uh, <laughs> or just yeah. or just overly excited. Right. Right, yeah. I get it. And whenever it comes to other people I just try my best. I I mean I I whenever I'm with other people, I try and be respectful to them. I try and be uh open with them mm -hmm. and I do my best to to follow my philosophy of that if I want to be treated well by others I should treat others well mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah right one thing that I know that uh, uh, some people are just jerks though right <laughs> I think we all are at some time it's well, some, some point or another the thing that I know about you is that um, you need like a couple extra beats after after somebody asks you a question before you can before you respond. Often, yes. I think you've done a phenomenal job of moving forward with that in life. You do very very well. If I asked you a question um, throughout the day. Often, especially if it's something that's kind of serious, something that has to have a decision made, mm -hmm. um, you you take there's there's silence, and it's important to wait. That's something that I've learned with you. It's important just to wait, not to fill it up with extra words. A lot of right. times, people when they talk, if there's silence afterwards. I think it's just like that might be human nature, but we think maybe we we were not heard, or, or we need to explain it more, or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And with you, what I found out is it's best just to stop. Yes, because it lets me focus on the question, and it lets me think things through while still having those words in my head, rather than trying to listen to everything else that's being said. And not remembering what the exact question is. Right. Right. And I've, and I've noticed so that the more words that are used, it gets very convoluted. Yes. And you need the time to process and then respond. Yes. And not just to process, but also to figure out what it is I want to say as an answer. Because not everyone's patient. Uh... Sometimes I have to say things the right way the first time. Otherwise, people can sometimes get the wrong impression of what I'm trying to say. And they'll focus on what I said that was wrong, mm -hmm. even if I try and correct myself. Wow, okay. That sounds like, that sounds pretty stressful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, I know that a lot of, a lot of the psychiatrists and psychologists I've seen in the past 
I've fallen into, into that little pitfall where I say something while trying to find the right words and it comes out a little bit wrong and then they focus on that and the whole <clears throat> and the whole meeting is then thrown <laughs> off because of that. Right, right. I know that you've told me that at times. We're like the whole session was worthless because you know, you, you said you made a comment and you might have been trying to make a joke. Yeah. That didn't land right. And then that was grabbed a hold of and just that was the focus the entire session. Yeah. Right now, you have the best um, match when it comes to a, a, a therapist yes. that you've ever had. Yeah. It feels to me that she really gets you and you really get her and she's able to not do what you just described. Yeah. She's very um, comfortable moving subjects. Yes. And not just that. If she does focus on it, she, which has happened once, she's focused on it. And I say, that's not what I'm trying to focus on. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, okay, what are we trying to focus on then? Mm-hmm. And then she just works with me in that regards. Right. And it, and it gets right back on track. Mm-hmm. And it feels like... Since you've been meeting with her, huge steps have been taken. Huge steps forward. And yeah. it's just, it's its awesome. The stuff that you learn, that you've learned up until this point, having communications with other people, how do you think that, how do you think that that's going to be when you're in a classroom and you're listening to a lecture and... The instructor doesn't pause and give you time to absorb the first part of something that was said. Are you asking me how I would deal with that? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, hopefully, the teacher is accommodating enough to... Uh, meet with me before class starts and so that I can explain my situation to them, mm -hmm. how I think things through mm -hmm. and how it would be helpful if there were pauses there here and there. I know that they have, I know that they have that really cool pin. The one that records uh, what people say and everything. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know how it does it. It's like a little smart pen. That might be what it's called. <laughs> I, I don't think know. It is actually. But it records a lecture, and then if you've written anything down, or if there's written anything down, you can put that pen to the word, and it will uh, play sentences that utilize that word yeah. within the sentence. Mm -hmm. I, I think that kind of stuff is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it's. It, it it is sometimes harder to get people to um, include adaptations that are foreign to their typical way of speaking. Mm -hmm. But this might be the thing that helps you to be able to follow up and you know yeah. do homework after. Um, I guess uh, I have a, a a really really good friend of mine is so incredibly smart that there's times that we'll be talking for a while and I have to tell her, okay, I'm full. Hmm. It's like, I can't, I cannot absorb any more of, of this <laughs> conversation. I, you know what I mean? It's like anything else is going to be lost on me because I've, I've paid attention. I've concentrated. I've, I've, I've soaked in. You know, I've sponged up what I could, and, you know, that you, heavy you need, conversation needs to stop. Now let's just talk about the mundane for a while. Yeah. Um, does, does that resemble anything that happens when you have conversations? With you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes. Uh, I've been on both ends of that before. Um not necessarily because it's been beyond my grasp of how to of how to see things 
but more so because there's just so much of it. Mm-hmm. And if it goes, if it comes in too fast, I don't have time to process it, so it doesn't get, it doesn't stick. Right. I want to go back a little bit to the difference in uh, a calm voice uh, versus a, a, a elevated voice. Does the emotion feel? Do you? Does that feel different to you? Um, let me put it a different way. If somebody's speaking calmly to you. Mm-hmm. At this point, are you able to tell if they're angry, if they're speaking calm? Sometimes, yeah. For the most part, yes. And... And a lot of that actually has to deal with not necessarily the verbal cues, but the nonverbal cues. Really? Yes. Like, for example, if someone's glaring at me and talking normally, it's like... What did I do wrong? <laughs> that's just that's just a very simple example. Well, right. But, right. Uh, but that's that's interesting to me because a lot of times when we're having a conversation, mm-hmm. you ask me about the emotion that's connected to it. So if I and I and I think that that's one of the the issues that has you know have been really worked on with you yeah. through your life through all the counseling is to read nonverbal cues as yeah. well as hearing the words that are being used hmm. um but you're saying that you're able to do to read nonverbal cues from people that you know or people that you don't know at this point it's easier with people that i know with that said, there are some transferable ideas, but they don't work with everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, from, as an example, uh, someone with Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. I want to react, not react, but uh, I want to... Respond? Yes, thank you. I want to respond to them in a nice way and everything. I'm just uncertain because I don't want to hurt their feelings about what I might say. And so it makes me very stressed out and it makes it very difficult for me to do anything with them. Because I don't want to step on any toes, so mm-hmm. to speak. And are you saying that's because you don't know their emotion behind what they're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And So so what you're saying is this it's not It's not the be- disability, it's because of my disability. Got it. Got it. So you're trying to be sensitive like I think, I really think that you're a, a kind and sensitive person towards everybody. Yeah. Um, and so what you're saying is just that you don't, for for a a person that doesn't necessarily make it obvious what what their their feeling is, they're not expressing themselves well, kind of like mm-hmm. I'm doing right now. <laughs> so when somebody's not uh, clear. On their emotion, that's a struggle for you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, continuing on from that, I don't want, like, like I said, I don't want to offend anybody, but sometimes I'm, sometimes I just get really nervous and and things like that because I don't want to offend anyone. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like, uh, I can remember when you were just a real little guy, um, there was, for for a a long period of time, all the counseling dealt with your response. Mm -hmm. 
And it wasn't something that came naturally. It's something that was taught, needed to be taught, and reinforced, and reinforced, and reinforced. Yes. And that's why you had the the therapeutic staff support for a while in school, so Mm -hmm. that she could show you in the moment how conversations go, Mm -hmm. and and what's appropriate, and what's inappropriate in the moment, since Mm -hmm. that was hard for you to take out of the moment, and then bring, you know, you didn't didn't have that recall, because it wasn't in that right when you were so let's say for example in the the therapist's office if you talked about something you couldn't implement that into a situation because that was talked about in the the, there was a disconnect in the situation right because you were in the office talking about it now here's a, a situation where it's animated yeah and what do you do with it yeah so you had years of of that Mm-hmm. And and it seems like it it seems like it's paid off, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty. It's cool. not perfect. I mean, we're having a whole conversation about why how it's not perfect, right? But. Right. And we're also having a conversation about you know about the my side of this as well, you know, because. You know, when we first started doing this, what I said to you is that you can say anything you want to say. We can talk about anything. And the truth is, is you know, it can go out there whether it's comfortable or not. You know, yeah. um, do, do I necessarily want the entire world to know that at times the past couple of years have been bat poop crazy? Well, you know, <laughs> it's the way it was. Like, you know what I mean? So why yeah. I'm not going to argue it. I, I support you completely because, yeah, it was it was tough to go through. And it was tough to help you when I was a mess myself. Hmm. And that to me has been, and I think probably, you know, now for a while, I really feel like, and I hope you do too, that things have really calmed down and it's a, Easy, yeah. easy conversations and yeah. whatever the whatever the subject, whatever the situation. Well, there have been a lot of serious conversations as well, mm-hmm. but they've been a lot tamer, so to right. speak. Right, I get it. Right, Cause, yes, right, right. I, it was me talking to you instead of Rage Face McGee. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, got it. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, no offense to anyone with the last name McGee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think uh, I think that's pretty much it for today. That I wanted to say. Is there anything else you want to like that comes up for you with this in in the way of conversation? Because I'm really, I think what I'm trying to uh, get out there today is that you've worked so hard. To be able to understand conversation. Yeah. Not only the words, but the energy behind the person's actions. And the the facets of what they can mean. Exactly. And what I'm recognizing is that when I've gone through this menopause stuff, there's no rationale... That I'm experiencing, that I did experience at times when I'm talking to you. So I'm recognizing that there's like, it feels like at the worst, a couple dysfunctions hitting against each other, you know? Yeah. And I'm just glad that we, you know, that... We got through that. Yeah, it was like two Legos being put together upside down. <laughs> right. It's not possible. <laughs> it's, it, it's not. So it, it wasn't sustainable. Right. You know, and it's just it's just interesting to me because our relationship, my relationship with anybody, including myself, for a period of time going through this was really just haywire. It nothing felt right. Yeah. You know, and. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just interested, you know, just wanted to, to, to talk about how you processed that, you know, when things were elevated, how you processed that versus right. when it was calm and right. anything else? Uh, 
No. All right, thanks, then. Thanks for coming by, everybody. Yeah, and um, Merry Christmas. Yeah, or Happy Hanukkah. Or, exactly. Or any other stuff. Mm-hmm. Happy Kwanzaa, right? You think so? Mm-hmm. Yep. So thank you so much for listening, and uh, we will talk to you next time, and love you. Yeah. Bye.